I think it's safe to say that we all love a good conclusion, following a story for a set amount of time, only to have it wrap up in the most satisfying way possible. This video is not about that. This video is about how interesting a piece of art can be if it goes unfinished. One of the major topics of this channel and reason for making this video is Berserk. The 1997 anime leaves you wanting more, and of course I watched that before I read any of the manga, so being left at that cliffhanger set me on a downward spiral like nothing else. I couldn't absorb more media around Berserk if I wanted to, and it was because of the unanswered questions and insane cliffhanger that it left off on. Most importantly, it asks more questions than it answers, leaving you on the edge of your seat needing more. If you don't know what I'm talking about with the end of the 1997 anime, it basically ends with a betrayal, the eclipse, and probably the most fantasy action part of the show up until that point. It kind of starts off as a medieval political war setting and gets slightly more magical as it goes up until the end where everything just explodes on its head. It's a huge twist and makes the show and story of the Golden Age what it is and so deeply fascinating. And what's insane is Berserk, unfortunately, did this again with the passing of its author. But let's focus on the 1997 anime for now. First time I watched the show was in 2020, maybe 2021. And I didn't really have the drive to read the manga, go out and find it. So when the show ended, I was just left there with my thought. And for someone that likes to deep dive, has ADHD brain, and just hyper focus on something, it was awesome. Left with all these questions and YouTube video essays, I went crazy. I had a great time. And eventually, by like 2022, 2023, I did start reading the manga, and I'm glad that I did. But before reading the manga, when it was just me after the eclipse sitting there thinking about what the heck is going to happen, I found my brain being more stimulated and just excited than ever before. And I think a major part of this was that the story was well crafted, but leaving off at a point such as that leaves you with endless possibilities for your brain to run wild. And then through online communities when you hear stuff about berserk what actually happens later on in the manga that like builds in your brain but you don't fully understand it so i was able to just like build and get excited about this world that i barely knew anything about because it was just getting into it with the show and then it got turned off and eventually of course it did lead to me reading the manga and getting to see where the story was supposed to go and not just what my brain could put together so I manned up and finally decided to actually read the manga, only to have something similar happen again around 25 years later after the 1997 anime got cancelled. Unfortunately, the author of Berserk passed away, leaving his story unfinished, which means that, yeah, the story's been going on for a really long time. Of course, that's, that's much sadder than just a show getting cancelled, but now, once again, I'm in that spot that I was couple years ago when I finished the anime being able to workshop in my mind theory craft where the hell the story is gonna go and that's kind of exciting once again being left with this endless possibility and wonder and sense of I don't know what's gonna happen next now I do have to say that the story is going to be continued just not by the original author apparently the ending was sort of mapped out so hopefully we will get a good deserved conclusion to berserk but i think it's fair to say that it won't be exactly the same as what we would have got and this is a good time to let your brain go wild and that's exactly what i've been doing i'm reminded of this video I watched by solar sands on youtube where he talks about michelangelo's unfinished artwork and you can see sculptures still cut in stone from Michelangelo, one of the most famous artists ever, that were never to be finished. And you can see what was done and then how it could have been finished. And I think that's really cool. You should definitely check out that video. We're going to get back to talking about anime 
video games, a little bit of Dark Souls, Full Metal Alchemist, in just a second. First, I wanted to connect what I'm talking about with Berserk and Michelangelo's art to real life. There are so many stories that are cut short. You think you're going to get this rising action, climax, falling action conclusion. It doesn't always happen. Stories end in the real world at all points. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. There are so many different stories and arcs that you're going to go through in your own life. Some ranging the entire 80 years you're going to be on this planet where you get all the way to the conclusion. Some stopping at the rising action. Whether it falls short or goes all the way through, there's going to be so many different elements to your life that get started up. And sometimes closure isn't always guaranteed. How many times have you like somebody had a crush and then it falls through never talking to that person again oh if i could only talk to her one more time oh if i just said this one last thing it doesn't typically happen or sometimes it's better if that doesn't happen life is a game that's meant to not always have the conclusion and sometimes it does and it's awesome and it feels great that's why we love movies and have satisfying conclusions but sometimes we don't get those conclusions and that's why unfinished stories and artworks are important too. If you were paying attention, I just mentioned Full Metal Alchemist. And in this context, with this video, I wanted to bring them up because of the fact that there's two different animes of Full Metal Alchemist, the original and then Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. And what I find interesting about this is Full Metal Alchemist had to rewrite the ending of the show because it didn't have any source material to go off of, eventually ending in a kind of cliffhanger with the show, needing to be finished by a movie. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, on the other hand, followed the source material all the way through, and we got the original ending that the author intended. What's so interesting about this is that the original show had to go out on a limb and kind of guesstimate how the show was supposed to end slash make up their own ending to a story that was already written by somebody else with its own setups and art. Similar to how when we find a source of media that isn't finished, like the Michelangelo sculpture, you have to create the ending of the sculpture yourself. You have to chip away the stone and find something that makes sense with what's already been done in your own mind. The creators of the show had to do that and then what's awesome about it is we also get the other side where hey we took a little bit more time we finished full monogamous brotherhood here is the actual ending and then you get two comparisons of the original creator's intention and the creator of the first shows different than the author their headcanon of how it could end which is something that I had to do with Berserk after I finished the 1997 anime, not reading the manga, just kind of had to explore my own mind where the heck things were going to go. I also think on a broader scope, the attraction I had to Berserk's story, especially when I didn't know where it was going, is similar to why I like Dark Souls and the From Software games so much. They're so opaque and non-specific with things that it just lets your mind go crazy go wild and search for information out there on the internet as well when i didn't read the manga for berserk i was watching video essays i was absorbing information i was kind of understanding i was trying to put it together and i loved it and then if you play something like dark souls through elden ring any of those games you realize that you're given like a little bit of information. If you really want to dive deep, you can get more information. If you play the game again, you'll get more information. If you look online, you get more information. And it's all just kind of this vague of a story that's amazing that hopefully one day you can understand, which can be very frustrating, and I see that, but for whatever reason, it works so well. And it's it's addictive in, in a beautiful outside looking in on this world that doesn't make any sense kind of way. I would like to say that obscurity and cliffhangers are not always a good thing. In fact, they can be extremely frustrating depending on the story. However, when done right, or if it's not an intentional cliffhanger, but just one that has to happen, that is when my brain gets addicted. I think I'd like to end this video by talking about how 
Without stories that aren't finished, you can't get the sense of relief from a great conclusion. Without bad stories, you can't have good stories. Without simple story structures, you can't have complex and vague ones. All of these things work together, and you should try to appreciate all of them. And with Berserk not ending with the original author writing it, I think that there's a certain mystique around Berserk. There always has been for me. And this is just another layer of that, like what could have been. It's been a very highly regarded story and mystery and something I've pondered on for so long that not having a clear cut ending almost adds to that and will like continue its legacy forever of like what could have been, how should it have ended and all that stuff. Anyway, I'm excited to read more of the manga and to hear what you guys think. I hope you have a fantastic day.